7th October, 7 p.m. What a historic day today. As I come to you live today, history has been made by two CRISPR experts. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2020, I'm sure you all have seen the news, has gone to two stalwarts of our scientific industry, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer A. Dodna. They were given the, awarded the Nobel Prize of 2020 chemistry for the development of method for gen genome editing. What a historic day today. And as we come together to discuss mass spectrometry masterclass, I would like to congratulate each one of you because you are pursuing science, because one among you has the capacity and capability to reach where these two ladies could arrive, could reach. So welcome everybody to Biotechnica and Rasainica's masterclass on mass spectrometry, a very interesting and important topic which we are going to take up today. And I welcome all of you to this wonderful webinar. And today, before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Tell me, who is the biggest employer or the largest employer in our country? Tell me, do you think it is the Army, the Navy, or the Indian Railways? No. The biggest employer of our country is inefficiency. Inefficient situations, inefficient conditions, is, which does not allow us to progress. Now, inefficiency in any other industry may be acceptable, but when it comes to biopharma industry, it is completely unacceptable. The reason I asked you this question is because I wanted to bring your focus on this particular webinar, that inefficiency is not welcome here. And that is the reason in biopharma industry, we use tools and techniques. In biopharma industry, we use so many tools and so many techniques and a lot of R&D uh, expenditure goes into developing these tools and techniques. The reason is just one, to eliminate inefficiency because we have to get better at what we do. Today, two of our um, great scientists received Nobel Prize in chemistry because they found out some tool, some technique, right? A similar technique is mass spectrometry. And today we have two experts from Biotechnica and Rasainica joining us live and they will be talking to us, talking to all of you and sharing their point of view and a lot of insights on mass spectrometry. This is an advanced class, so keep your pen and paper ready. And this particular advanced class will be live broadcasted from Bengaluru headquarters of Bi uh, Biotechnica and Rasainica. And we will be talking about this important and universal technique. So while I'm waiting my experts to join in, I wanted to also update you that today, if you attend our webinar till the end, then we are going to give you this book, which is right over there. I'm going to give you this ebook as a free gift to whoever attends this webinar till the end. Now, what is this ebook about? This ebook has got advanced techniques and it is an ultimate guide which you must have if you are a master's or a PhD to get a job in the industry. So this is something which has been specifically designed for the biosciences, biopharma and chemical industry. And if you attend till the end, you're going to get this ebook. Now coming to our uh, webinar, I can see my experts have joined in, but before I pass on the controls, I would uh, as always request you, please share this particular webinar link as your WhatsApp status, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you are, because that way you also project how knowledgeable you are and uh, also more people will be able to join and discuss this particular technique in detail. So before I pass on, can I have a yes? Have you shared the link? Yes? Okay, wonderful. So let's welcome our first expert of the day. After the first expert, we'll be joined by the second expert and both of them will be talking in detail, uh, Dr. Priyanjana and Dr. Somrita. 
I'll meet you at the end with the feedback form link where you have to fill the feedback and then join us on Telegram as well. So don't forget to join us on Telegram. We have a big group on Telegram for Biotechnica as well as Rasainika two separate groups. You can join there if you want to stay updated with the latest from the biosciences industry. And do not forget to fill out the feedback form because we are going to give you a surprise gift as well. All right, so with this, we will start our session now. Thank you so much and see you at the end. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And good evening to everyone. So my name is Shomrita and today I will be giving you a brief idea about the mass spectrometry based proteomic analysis. I will tell you about the basic principles of your mass spectrometry and I will also tell you how and why this mass spectrometry is so very important in your curriculum. And it is a must for you to know some basic ideas or the you know functionality of this mass spectrometry because that is what is going to help you in your future if you choose your future in your research work that will help you if you select your future in the industrial area there also this mass spectrometry is going to come handy so to start with mass spectrometer you know, whenever we think about this word, we think of a device which is there at the corner of your lab, right? And in fact, I presume that every one of you, you must have heard about this mass spectrometer. Because those uh, specifically who are pursuing your masters or you are preparing for your uh, the CSIR net or any of these uh, uh, exams, under the field of instrumentation, you have a section dealing with your mass spectrometer, isn't it? And in fact, some of you, you must have already used this mass spectrometer during your uh, dissertation work or maybe in some of your uh, summer projects, right? So all of you, you know that mass spectrometry is what? It is a very, very powerful analytical tool. And it is used vastly in the research lab. So virtually ubiquitous research tool, we can say. Now, whenever we think about this mass spectrometer, we think of a device which is very huge, right? Kept on the tabletop. But did you know that over time, this MS technologies, it has evolved and it is constantly evolving. Now, not only you get that big fat device, but you also get some miniature structures of these MS uh, tools. Like what you see in this diagram here. The first one, this is showing you a very small device which can fit in your hand, right? Which is portable. You can take it anywhere. Okay, you can take it to the field. You can take it anywhere. So this is what is known as your palm portable mass spectrometer. Now this palm portable mass spectrometer, you know, this weighs very less. Around it is uh, some 1 kg. And the size from the picture itself, you can understand, is so small, right? And the battery that is used here, it is a very average battery, which is uh, having a power of around 5 uh, watts, all right? So basically this uh, miniature uh, device, it has got an iron trap which is used as a mass analyzer inside it. So here what you can do is, uh, you know, this device, it can scan the iron mass up to 300 mass by charge ratio particles. All right, 300. So this has been used in warfare uh, to detect any chemical uh, attack or it has also been used in your environment 
okay to control the environmental pollution to detect uh, what is there the chemical composition of that environment uh, at that present moment or, or the quality of the air okay and it is also used to detect some explosive or drugs as well and as you can understand since this is portable you can do all these various work you can take it to the field actually right now there is another device here mini 12 psms system this is also a very small device but not as small as your palm portable mass spectrometer now this is basically a benched up miniature mass spectrometer uh, system okay with your ambient uh, ionization source and tandem mass spectrometry uh, capabilities and this has also got various uses like uh, you know you can uh, analyze some uh, unprocessed sample over here uh, you know in a very small volume and uh, this is basically used uh, in monitoring of your uh, trace levels of chemicals in the therapeutic section or it is also sometimes used in the case of your food safety and environment protection all right so these are these also has got a lot of uses not only that big fat mass spectrometer that you have at the corner of your laboratory and in fact mass spectrometer nowadays has gained so much of importance that there is no research laboratories or no university where this uh, mass spectrometer is not found in every lab you will definitely get a mass spectrometer and that is true for indian laboratories as well okay indian laboratories and the universities as well so if i see mass spectrometer has got a very important role in the omics error. So this is our omics error, right? We have the proteomics, metabolomics, genomics, transcriptomics, and so many omics, right? Now, first and foremost, what we have is the DNA. DNA can have mutations, right? And those are the sections that will be covered under your genomics. Now, from DNA, obviously, the RNA is being transcribed. So that gives rise to the transcriptomics where you are talking about the different RNAs. Okay. Now some of uh, some portion of this transcriptomics will obviously produce some proteins, some polypeptides. So that comes under your proteomics. Now this mass, anal uh, mass spectrometer analysis, it has got a huge uh, role in the analysis of the protein, in understanding the quality, in understanding the structure of the proteins right now not only it is confined to this proteomics but you know uh, some of the proteins they also act as your enzymes okay they also function in the metabolism so that comes under your metabolomics so even here the mass uh, uh, spectrometer it has got a very very important role why because here it is like uh, used uh, to understand the complex interaction which is built in the uh, metabolic pathways all right uh, during the metabolomics profiling there also you can use this mass spectrometer so like that way you can use it for the lipidomics you can use it for the biomarker discovery you can use it in the ptm analysis post uh, translational modification analysis you can also use it in the entire tomes, uh, tomics, okay, what I just told you, how this whole thing is interacting because one omic is some connected to the other omic, right? So mass spectrometer has got a huge application in all of these omics, in characterization of all of these different uh, molecules in the under different omics here. Now, what is the need of mass spectrometer? Well, mass spectrometer, by now you must have understood that it has got a huge role in the clinical studies. Why in the clinical studies? Because here it is being used to identify the drugs. Okay, when you are formulating a drug, drug is what? It is simply connected or it is uh, made up of certain molecules, right? The chemical molecules. 
so what you have to do is you have to analyze these chemical molecules so in clinical studies and uh, cancer research also you can use this uh, mass spectrometer in fact i want to tell you a very interesting point that there is a, a device which is known as your mass spec pens you know mass spec pen it's nothing but a pen like structure all right and this pen like structure this is connected to the proper mass spectrometer and this pen like structure or this mass spec pen this is used in the surgical room okay when the doctors are treating some cancer patient it is uh, going undergoing some surgery the doctors can use this pen to find out uh, the cancerous tissue and this works in a real time manner actually okay so as you can see it has got such a important role in your clinical studies not only that in geological studies in pharmaceutical analysis in environmental studies and also in the forensic application your mass spectrometer comes handy okay it has got a huge role in each one of these fields now if you ask me uh, the if or if you look into the applications of these uh, mass spectrometer then you will see that uh, you know it is possible to understand the spectrum of molecule from the uh, surface of a rose while the plant is alive through this mass spectrometer that much of uh, analysis that much of accuracy can be you can get from this mass spectrometer so this mass spectrometer of a, of molecules you know say the metabolites or the drugs or the cancer markers they can be measured on the patient's skin on the on in his blood all of these can be done in fact to understand the uh, fundamental atomic uh, structure okay or uh, the molecule uh, process at the same time uh, those of your immediate relevance to the events within the cell all of these can be analyzed now mass spectrometer has got it's a boon in your industry why because if you look in at the industrial level then this mass spectrometer it has been extensively used okay like in the case of your food industry this mass spectrometer can be used to uh, for the quantification of low molecular weight food components to trace the uh, for the trace organic contaminants okay to find those out and it can also be used to uh, detect any kind of adulterations in your very expensive oils like your olive oils and all okay so uh, such detection of the food quality can be done by your mass spectrometry if you look into the chemical petroleum sector here also the mass spectrometer has got a huge role how this mass spectrometer it plays a very critical role in understanding the characterization of the petroleum so just can you understand if you can characterize a, a petroleum that means what it is uh, leading to a tremendous amount of information that is being generated right of the uh, elemental components of the compounds which make up the petroleum isn't it so we get so much of knowledge from there in space science yes in space science as well mass spectrometer does have a role okay in what you must have heard that when any uh, these analyzers are sent to the space okay to analyze the surface of the moon or surface of mars okay they do what they uh, collect the soil right and they uh, characterize the you know the nature of the soil they try to find out the chemical compositions which are present in the soil and from there they try to get some idea about the life whether life existed on that planet or not okay what is the environment what is the atmosphere everything in fact uh, if you know that uh, saturn's tit titan uh, satellite okay over there the hydrocarbon c has been analyzed using this mass spectrometer 
So mass spectrometer is not only applied to this planet but also beyond this planet. Now similarly mass spectrometer has got a lot of role in your biotechnology section as well and of course in the nuclear sector also. Okay, like in the nuclear sector, this mass spectrometry, you know, this is uh, used as a very, used for the determination of the elements of uh, the trace and uh, the ultra trace level along with the isotope uh, ratios and all. Okay, so this accuracy in the quantification of the uh, isotope ratios of the radionuclear type. This is essential for, you know, environmental monitoring, uh, migration studies, uh, then dating determination of, uh, you know, burning up of these fuels, even the nuclear matter uh, account accounting and also to detect the radioactive waste control. Now, we are not only restricted to that much. Now, what is happening is the pandemic right we are all concerned about it we are all trying to find out some means to uh, you know go for a better device for understanding uh, the positive patients or you know I want to say that uh, to detect the corona infection and along with that parallelly we are also trying to find out some uh, vaccines for it right so initially what you know is coronavirus detection is done by the PCR, right? But actually along with PCR, mass spectrometer has also been used to detect this uh, virus. So it has been seen that uh, or it was done by the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology and National Center for Your Disease Control. Uh, they detected this novel coronavirus with mass spectrometer with 95% sensitivity and 100% specificity with respect to RT-PCR technique. So you can really understand how important is this mass spectrometer, right? Now, mass spectrometry, therefore, the market is growing strong day by day so as and how we are realizing where we can use this mass spectrometer how we can use this mass spectrometer and uh, what are the benefits we can derive by using this mass spectrometer the more we are realizing the market is growing more okay so there is a huge demand of uh, people who knows the functionality of this mass spectrometer, who understands that, you know, the technology behind this mass spectrometer, who can analyze this uh, the results of a mass spectrometer. So, as there is technology advancements, there's growing uh, end-user industries, rapid evolution of healthcare, increasing support and funding from governments, and of course, the advancement in the life science research, all of these has resulted in the growth of the mass spectrometer market. And to, you know, uh, stay in pace with this growth, you have these uh, uh, companies which are uh, there for, which are actually uh, manufacturing these mass spectrometer and uh, these companies, they are the basic players in the global mass spectrometry market. And if you look at the analysis, we look at the graph of this uh, compound annual growth, then you will see that from uh, some 2019 to 2024, okay, there is around 6.7% of growth that is estimated so as you can see right now you are where you're in 2020 okay and here from here to till 2024 it is estimated that this market is going to grow okay more and more so therefore you are you can find a lot of 
opportunities in this particular market under this uh, spectrometry, mass spectrometry itself. So, since we have now seen the uh, what is the criteria, what is the market scenario of this mass spectrometry, let us quickly just uh, look at what is mass spectrometer. So, first and foremost, mass spectrometry is a technique for production of charged molecular species and the separation by magnetic and electric uh, field based on mass to charge ratio, right? Now, if you look at the relevance of mass spectrometry, it is based on what? The detection, identification, structure elucidation, structure of what? The molecules which are making up that particular compound okay and obviously the quantification now if you see the main domains of mass spectrometry then you have to understand the fundamentals of this mass spectrometry okay now when you talk about the fundamentals of mass spectrometry that means what the principle behind this mass spectrometry okay so the technical issues then how the sample is introduced now what is happening before the sample is introduced how you're processing the samples okay all of these now after introducing the samples then um, you know what is happening or why it is happening both these two questions are very important what is happening and why it is happening so after sample introduction these are the things that you need to know and uh, apart from, you know, there are many chambers in your mass spectrometry uh, device. So, uh, for each of these sections, what is the principle behind uh, the functionality of each of these sections? That is something that you need to know. So, you have to understand the fundamentals, you have to understand the ionization process because this is the first step that is happening after the sample is introduced. And uh, over there, because of, uh, you know, the internal energy is increased so much that the uh, molecules it is broken into parts okay now so you have to understand what is the meaning of your isotopic distribution isotopic mass because see since you are uh, doing your analysis based on the mass by charge ratio therefore what is happening under this mass spectrometry it is possible to detect even the isotopes okay of the elements so uh, that can also be done so uh, all these reasons all these things the types of mass analyzers which are used the combination of mass analyzers which are used and why they are used okay the modes of operation then uh, interpretation of the mass spectra then fragmentation pathways okay characterization so you are getting the interpretation you got the graph okay but you have to know what that graph means otherwise it's of no use uh, so from that graph uh, what is the characterization of ions that you are getting to find that is something that you need to know you need to gain your knowledge in those areas and of course the application identification and the quantitation okay so this is the main domains of your mass spectrometry that you have to focus when you are going to study the mass spectrometry now the unique feature of ms is what it has got a very good molecular specificity it has got a very good detection sensitivity it is versatility and wide applicability and it is having this analysis of complex samples can be done with this so these are the unique features why MS is so very important. Now, why do we need to use MS? Because it saves time. It can handle lots of samples. It is customizable. So depending upon what sample you are using accordingly, you can customize it. Okay. Uh, the perf it can perform the omics experiments. And of course, it has got this power technique as well now if you look into the basic components of the mass spectrometer then obviously as i told you the whole mass spectrometer it is divided into various sections what are the different sections you have the sample inlet you have the ion source 
you have the mass analyzer, you have the detector and you have the data system. So from here onwards, your sample is entering this mass spectrometer, right? And it is simultaneously going uh, through all of these sections within this particular device. And ultimately, it is giving you some kind of an output from here. Now, when you are putting in your sample, okay, in the samplet inlet, then before you insert the sample, you have to process the sample. So, that can be done by many different techniques. It can be done by your direct infusion. It can be done by gas chromatography, liquid chromatography, capillary electrophoresis, all of these. Now, when you uh, when the sample has been introduced, it gets into the second chamber, okay, which is the main chamber. So, which is the ion source where the ionization is going to take place. Now, depending upon the different kinds of ionizer, you have different types of these mass spectrometer. So, if it is a gas phase and you, you are applying different kinds of ionization techniques, if it is a solution phase, then you are applying different kinds of ionization techniques. If it is solid phase, then you are again applying different kinds of ionization technique, right? Then this particular uh, molecule, okay, or these ions, because here you had a molecule, you have subjected it to a uh, ionizer, ionizing energy, okay? And what has happened is, this molecule it has lost one electron and now it has become a positive ion all right it has broken up into several ion, uh, atoms and now it is having a positive charge now this enters into the mass analyzer all right now in this mass analyzer again you have different types of the mass analyzer you have the time of flight quadrupole you have the iron trap and all of these. Now, of this, these are the three major types of mass analyzers which are used. Apart from that, obviously, you have the FTICR, you have the Orbi trap, you have the magnetic sector. Okay. From here, it goes into the detector and in the detector, again, the detector are of different types depending upon what you are trying to detect. Okay. So, you have the electron multiplier, you have the Faraday cup, you have the a photo multiplier conversion diode you have the array detector all of these and lastly there is the data system now the key steps in your uh, mass spectrometer as i've just pointed out there it is the section where the sample enters okay and after that is the first section where the ionizing ionization is happening so here what you do as i told you your the uh, uh, molecule or the compound it is introduced to this electron beam okay after that you have this ion accelerated chamber okay where acceleration is going to take place how see as i told you this becomes your positive ions right so what happens you have many electrodes give placed here all right the first one is a positive one, then you have the negative and then you have more negative electrodes placed, placed at this end. So as a result, what is happening since this is a positive ion, when it enters this particular section, it moves towards this end. Okay. And it gets accelerated as well. After that, you have the deflection. Deflection is done by this magnetic field that we are generating. Now by this time, this uh, molecule, it has got divided into smaller parts, right? So, based on its mass, this is going to get deflected by when it's going to come in exposure to this magnetic field, okay? So, obviously, the smaller molecules, they are going to get deflected more than the larger one. So, accordingly, they will reach this detector at a specified time, okay? So, like that way, from this detector, after this, it is going to the amplifier and from there, it is going to the computer where it is being analyzed okay where the graph is being projected and from that graph analysis you are understanding what is the composition of that particular molecule fine now a very important of these uh, spectrometer is your ms ms one okay now ms ms is also known as your tandem 
mass spectrometry okay and this is a device where you are using more than one mass analyzer so what happens here is uh, this first mass analyzer it breaks up the uh, samples okay according to a particular uh, mass by uh, charge ratio and from here ions of a particular ratio they are again sent to the second analyzer where they are split into further uh, molecule okay for the structures and then they go to the detector so this particular technique it is mainly used to identify uh, compounds like your proteins and all okay so how it works if you see then first and foremost you have to take the cells of the tissues from which you are going to extract the proteins all right now uh, from here you can select a particular protein of a particular uh, molecular weight and you can do it by obviously the western blotting now uh, whichever protein you are interested in okay or the protein of a particular molecular weight which you are interested in you are going to digest it into peptides okay after that you expose it to the liquid chromatography so the peptide separation is happening over here and after that it is exposed to this electro spray ionization where they are forming the ion peptide okay this ion peptide is and then going into the first mass analyzer where you are getting a particular spectrum here ms spectrum where a particular uh, mass by charge ratio uh, detection is given here from here one particular or a set of a particular ions okay of a particular ratio that is being sent to the second mass analyzer for further processing and from here you get the final result so this gives you more accurate and more detailed results of that particular protein and from this chart you get to understand what is the basic uh, composition of this uh, protein that you have taken okay so this is the overview of your mass spectrometry so to know more details about this mass spectrometry uh, you can enroll to this course we have where we are going to discuss this mass spectrometric detail uh, techniques in very detail starting from the basics to the advanced sections and uh, ma'am will be discussing the details about this course but this is something that is very very useful now because as you have by this time understood that mass spectrometry is so very important in so many fields it has got so much of uh, a role to play okay so um, it has got role it is important for your research labor, uh, work it is also important in your industry so and always remember that no matter how much experience you have there is always something new you can learn and room for improvement right so wish you all the best for your future and thank you after me priyanjana ma'am is going to continue is she is going to elaborate on this course and what else you can learn about this mass spectrometry why you should know about it so thank you hello everyone good evening am i audible to everyone please confirm me on that by dropping a yes at in the chat box okay okay that's great that's really great thank you so much everyone for the feedback and uh, my screen is visible to every one of you is it again confirm me on that too by saying yes okay great fantastic so thank you so much for the feedbacks everyone this is priyanjana ghosh and i will be your host for next minutes in this webinar so we have gathered this evening to discuss about this important technique and that is called as mass spectrometric based proteomic analysis it's a important te technique and already Shomrita has given a wonderful talk. She has given a beautiful insight on this technique. So yes, 
we all know that definitely before entering any practical experience it's highly important that they understand the technique behind what they are doing and its applications isn't it it is very very important see when we are into any field of research so we have to understand the technique behind the applications why we want to apply this particular technique isn't it that is mandatory and definitely mass spectrometric study or mass spectrometric technique is one such technique which can be used in a lot of disciplines in a lot of fields okay and it is we can say or we can refer that it is or it can be applied for multidisciplinary fields isn't it so let's excavate excav that what else is we have store in for this particular technique now the first thing which we have to understand we have this confusion sometimes that is what is the difference between spectroscopy and the spectrometry both are same or they are different from each other isn't it this happens to us every time so what do we mean by spectroscopy so when we are saying spectroscopy it is the study of radiated energy and matter to determine their interaction and it does not create results on its own so mass spectroscopy is the study of radiated energy so when we say spectroscopy that means we are involving the concept of radiated energy okay and definitely the matter to determine their interaction and definitely the result what what we get the output that we get out of that it's not created on its own okay we have to imply or we have to input the concept of this radiation energy to this it's much more of physics we can say okay in a much more simpler version but when we say metry spectrometry it's the application of spectroscopy so that there are quantifiable results that can be assessed that means one is a mechanical one isn't it and another one that means when we say spectrometry it is much more quantitative so when we are about to implement this technique in life sciences no in any field of life sciences when we are collaborating any of our work of our research work with this particular technique it would be spectrometry isn't it because most of the time we work with or we have this notion to quantify like if i talk about protein quantification so definitely we have to go for this spectrometric study okay and we all know that mass spectrometry is a very powerful and analytical tool with a high sensitivity and high mass accuracy which is very very important and uh, when we talk about the recent technical innovations in mass spectrometry based techniques that have contributed to a range of highly sensitive and versatile instruments for high throughput high sensitive and proteome scale profiling definitely we always think of mass spectrometry okay so definitely spectrometry means the quantitative aspect and when we say spectroscopy it is just the interactions so definitely first it should be scopy because it is determining the interactions and post interactions we are going to get the quantitative version of the same so that is what the basic point of difference between scopy and metry so hope this is clear to every one of you here is it or not come on give me a big yes in the chat box okay okay that's great now so coming to the mass spectrometry experiment so we all know that mass spectrometry or meter it comprises of some basic components because when we talk about a technique it should comprise of some basic units or basic components isn't it so which are definitely much essential for that technique to be a successful one so we need an ionizer we need a mass analyzer so basically what happens we know that mass spectrometry it separates the ions and we did it by mass to charge ratio 
so there will be a place where we have to give in that particular compound suppose if i talk about a very simple compound like butane here and we have give it inside the mass analyzer we have to come out with that what are the charge compositions of that particular compound so we know butane or what is the charge of the butane here so the most interesting part is mass spectrometry can analyze separately positive charges negative charges or both the charges so it can work individually as cat for cations for anions or for both simultaneously okay so that means if any compound is unknown to us we want to deduce the particular charge status of that particular compound then definitely we have to go for this experimental type isn't it and for that we need a spec mass spectrometric study so supposedly butane we know it comprise of positive charges okay so definitely what will it do is it will we will be placing this particular compound inside a mass analyzer but we do not know that it is butane prior on a prior basis we have to find out what particular substance is this so what will the mass spectrometric do at first and it will analyze the charges and here we will get to see that only positive charges is coming out so at first and we we will be able to note that okay this is a positively positive charged compound or it comp comprise of both the charges okay another most important thing is that when we are separating inside a mass spectrometer okay what happens we get some radicals so the uh, the, the symbols which we use is suppose if this is i write x here so it can be x positive x negative and there will be radical symbol okay so radicals are also going to separate out inside a mass spectrometer but it is not counted like when i'll finally get my data out of that the radicals won't be getting mapped up okay so only the core charged particles we are going to get as a data out of a mass analyzer okay so here will be an ionizer there will be a stream of gas phase molecules molecular ions and the most important thing that happens inside it is the fragmentation okay the charge gets broken down okay i'll be giving you some insight more on this and there will be a detector that will be able to detect the type of the ions okay now most importantly the types of ms or mass spectrometric we have that is very very important to get analyzed isn't it so what are the types we have we have accelerator accelerator mass spectroscopy we have gas chromatography we have liquid chromatography we have inductively coupled plasma mass spectroscopy isotope ratio spectroscopy mass spectroscopy ion mobility spectroscopy tandem and thermal ionization mass spectroscopy not only this we have a lot more okay like another one the most important one we know that we have malditoff matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of light which is a commonly used ms technique and maldi we all all know it's a soft ionization technique to create ions okay with minimal fragmentation by using a laser energy in tof okay and the protonated ions are accelerated by an electric field over there okay so the velocity of the ion it depends always on m by z ratio we have apart from this we have triple quadrupole mass spectrometry okay that is we called as tqms and triple quadrupole mass spectrometer is a tandem mass spectrometer only okay so definitely in which the first and third quadrupoles they act as mass filters and the second it acts as a collision cell to fragment the selected precursors so i'll give you a small insight on the mechanism here okay so i'll take this blank portion so what happens generally when we give in suppose uh, i have given the particular compound like ch3 ch2 ch2 like this okay so is it as i told you it's a positive charged if i consider to be as a positive charge so it's an arbitrary compound i have taken so as i told you inside a fragmentation is going to take place okay so how will it break down is like ch3 ch2 okay from the ch3 ch2 i'll get suppose ch 
uh, 3CH like this. Again, it will break down to form CH3. So, this is the way the fragmentation basically take place inside the mass analyzer. Okay. And what happens now as I was talking about the M by Z ratio. So, suppose if I consider that the molecular weight of this particular compound is 58 gram per mole. Then the first M by Z amount that we are going to get, it should be always lower than the exact molecular weight. Okay. So, if suppose I got the first M by Z ratio to be as 45. So, I am going correct. I have no anomalies in that particular process. Okay. So, that is my first thing to be, we have to consider that. Okay. So, suppose that means CH3, CH2 will have an M by Z ratio for arbitrarily it is 45. Next, we will move on to CH3, CH suppose. So, definitely it will have a lesser M by Z ratio. Suppose it will have 30, 30 suppose. Okay. And CH3 will have got 15. So, like this no, it will be degrading. The fragmentation will take place like this. Clear? And ultimately no, these all are called as fragmented ions. Whatever ions we are going to get in between, they will be all referred to as fragmented ions. Okay. And Finally, the ones which we are going to get, that means ultimately we will be getting uh, only carbon also. So, if this status will be called as product ions or the daughter ions, because that is the final fragmented ion we are getting. Okay, so it can be called as a daughter or a fragmented ion. So, this is the entire uh, rough procedure I told you about this. And more or less for all the types of mass spectrometric techniques, the same concept or the principle will be followed. Okay, so be it for your thermal ionization, be it for anything, but sometimes what happens, like it is like, no, uh, when we cook anything, the principle is same. You have to lit your oven, you have to give and put an oil to that, but this is the basic thing, right? But for different dishes, you have to give in or put in different spices and then only it will create separate dishes. So, same goes for mass spectrometry here. The concept, the principle remains the same. But when it is for different categories like gas, like uh, liquid chromatography, like isotope ratio, mass uh, spectroscopy, I IRMS, or uh, if I talk about hybrid linear iron trap, orbit trap mass spectrometry, all these things, they have some different components that are used. Okay, there lies the difference between all these different techniques. Okay, like I told you about hybrid linear iron trap. Okay, it's called as another technique hybrid linear iron trap. Okay, so this is another technique. So, in this what happens, uh, it, this MS it combines a linear iron trap and high resolution orbit trap which is one of the tandem mass spectrometers. Okay, and uh, the orbit trap it consists of an axially symmetrical mass analyzer that make the ions in an orbital motion around the spindle. So, these are all high definition mass spectrometers, okay, and they definitely are very, very costly also. But yes, the precision which you get is excellent, okay, the excellent precision you will be getting with these techniques. So, applications of mass spectrometry. So, what are the applications? Yes, definitely we have to uh, know that, okay. So, first and foremost, how MS has been contributed to healthcare. Okay, it has got a great contribution. So, yes, if you look at no MS based metabolomics in metabolomics in health and medical sciences, okay, uh, then we have uh, applications in the field of precision medicine, forensic sciences, toxicology, nutrition science, drug. So, a lot of uh, fields we will get to see the amalgamation of mass spectrometry is taking place. So, definitely it has uh, mass spectrometry has gained a lot of popularity for protein analysis and uh, it is highly on demand like for protein analysis only it is highly in demand specifically in the healthcare sector. Okay and uh, definitely for protein al analysis due to its ability to tackle the intricacies underlying the proteome. And uh, the most important thing is the three uh, fundamental applications of the technique in proteomics, which is based on mass spectrometry, will be the protein interactions, 
one number one will be protein interaction number two will be categorizing protein expression okay so i'm writing in short and the third one will be locating sites of protein modification locating sites of protein modification so these are the three pillars i would say upon which the entire application of mass spectrometry is dependent okay so for this it has really gained a lot of popularity in the field of healthcare sector now when we come to proteomics it is definitely very very important so in case of proteomics how it is important basically so analysis of the entire protein complement of a cell tissue or organism under specific defined set of conditions okay like definitely no mass spectrometry already has emerged as an indispensable method okay for the characterization and sequencing of different proteins and uh, the development of specifically the two soft ionization techniques that is uh, electrospray ionization and uh, matrix assisted laser resorption ionization these two esi and maldi they have revolutionized protein analysis i would say via mass spectrometry okay so it's really very interesting that we have or we are able to amalgamate and collaborate the technique of mass spectrometry with the field of proteomics and it's a great technique i would say so as i told it relies on three basic technological cornerstones method to fractionate the complex protein peptide mixtures next is ms to acquire the data necessary to identify individual proteins bioinformatics to analyze and assemble ms data so definitely those who are from this bioinformatics field they have a really a great opportunity to work with this because definitely there is a very wrong notion everybody think that bioinformatics is a uh, all work will be dry lab and uh, they cannot implement any of the wet lab technique so it's a very wrong concept i would say so it's a good news for the bioinformatics anybody is from bioinformatics so uh, he or she will be very much happy to hear this that definitely uh, any of you who are from bioinformatics they are definitely we require them to analyze and they really need ms data to collaborate their work and for that they definitely require this field okay they have to be master in this field so what are the recent technical innovations in ms so uh, already i have given you an insight uh, regarding all the types remember that is maldi top mass spectrometry triple quadrupole okay orbit trap i told you hybrid ion so these are the most latest one okay so that is what i'll just give you an example like i told you know that where lies the difference in each of the techniques it's just on their uh, components that are you are using so suppose if we say maldi what is special about maldi in maldi we say we have we use a matrix so why this matrix is used for because this matrix is used for the bio material which we are using for the mass spectrometric study so that it doesn't get distorted by the use of any radiations because we are using laser radiations isn't it so that is very important here okay so that is a very important uh, thing so that is why we generally use matrix so that we prevent this and desorption means as i told you we supply a lot of uh, it will be a gaseous chamber so the ions after separation they will be dissolved to a separate chamber so absorption and desorption you can understand right absorption is getting absorbed desorption means to come out okay so that is the basic concept if you break each of the words no you will get to understand the meaning of those techniques and it's really interesting okay so now it has got so much precision with mass spectrometry we can implement this technique in each and every field of life sciences chemical sciences pharmaceutical sciences so it's a great boon to this industry i would say okay so recent advances in uh, ms based clinical proteomics so like very interesting to say it's like profiling of the tumor genome and transcriptome and now established tools for uh, discovery of novel biomarkers and these are the recent advancement we can say 
like with the help of MS, we are able to alter proteome expression that are more likely to reflect changes in tumor pathophysiology. So see, it's not only for the normal life sciences background, now MS has emerged the field of medical sciences too. And a lot of work is going on, definitely. Okay, so it's, a, I would say, definitely it has got a lot and lot of implications and uh, it's really, as I said, it's a boon. So it's a powerful method that enables increasingly comprehensive insights into changes of the proteome. And the most important part of MS now is it's really collaborating with proteomic studies. That is the most and the best part of the mass spectrometric technique to be analyzed. So it's an overview of clinical cancer proteomic strategies as you can see here. So here you can see solid tumor, patent, patient fluids, animal models, cell based systems. So uh, they all are part of CPTAC. Now, uh, what do we mean by CPTAC? It's clinical proteomic tumor analysis. Okay. So basically what we wanted to exhibit here is that cancer biomarkers. Okay. They have transformed current practices in the oncology clinic and this continued discovery and validation, they are very much crucial for improving the early diagnosis, which is very important nowadays. The risk stratification, monitoring of the patients, uh, response to the treatments. So profiling of tumor genome, like here we have taken a solid tumor, okay, we have this LCM, okay, the patient fluids we can see in front of us. So profiling of tumor genome and the transcriptome are now uh, one of the most established tools, I would say for the discovery of any novel biomarkers. But alteration in any proteome expression are more likely to reflect any changes in the tumor pathophysiology. Okay, and uh, in this scenario, mass spectrometric study is a very much powerful method that will enable increasingly comprehensive insights into changes of the proteome level to advance the personalized medicine. Okay, and the recent improvements in the MS-based clinical proteomics are highlighted definitely, uh, basically with the help of uh, cancer. And we all know that cancer is the second leading cause of death and uh, it possesses a major problem to healthcare systems worldwide. So the prevalence of cancer remains stable with an estimated 1.7 million new cases. Okay, so and definitely to... Uh, to overcome that, we have to take the help of this, the method or technique called as mass spectrometric study. So this is a very specified uh, system I have put up here, which is definitely a very uh, specific. So I won't go into details of that. So the insight which I wanted to give you here is yes, we can definitely collaborate the concept of mass spectrometry in the cases or in field of oncology too. So, so we have or we are trying to definitely uh, ease your work. That means as I was giving you a lot of insights about this technique as you already have got to know about it. So Biotechnica have launched like Biotechnica is launching a lot of courses. So one of the most important course that Biotechnica has come up with is mass spectrometric based proteomic analysis. So definitely Standing at this point of time, if you can enroll for this course, if you can be a part of this course, it will definitely add a feather to your biodata, to your future even. Because post this particular pandemic phase also, a lot of concerns, a lot of organizations have to depend upon this technique as we got to know that it has got a lot and lot of implications even in health sector. So if you can write one point in your bio data that yes, you are aware of this technique, no one could stop you from hiring you, isn't it? So this will add to your job skills, definitely. Okay. And what are the course modules? So I'll just want to 
give an idea about the course modules we are having. So we have introduction to proteomics, which is very important as we are amalgamating mass spectrometric with proteomics. We definitely will be brushing up of the basics of mass spectrometric study. We are going to focus upon the fragmentation method for proteome identification and quantification analysis like we have CID, ETD, HCD, which already ma'am has told about. And uh, yes, in details, we are going to cover them up. So definitely, we are going to cover the quantitative proteomics. As I said in the beginning of my session, that the literal meaning of metry means quantitative. And we have to focus on this particular part. So definitely, we have to be aware that what is all about quantitative proteomics, isn't it? Yes. So definitely, some bioinformatic tools to identify and quantify proteins using mass spectrometric data. So these will be the modules, some more post-translational modification analysis using mass spectrometry, single cell proteomics by mass spectroscopy, new approaches, that is what are the new applications, that also you will be learning in this course, that where and how you can implement mass spectroscopic studies. What are the challenges? Because definitely when you are learning about a technique, you have to know everything about it, the pros and the cons, isn't it? So definitely you have to know about its challenges also. And then only you can successfully implement because you should be aware of all the things of this technique and applications of mass spectrometry. So definitely it is very, very important. And another very important thing to be discussed is the companies which are working with this sector or with this technique. So some of the renowned companies will be six, the power of precision, Thermo Fisher Scientific, Perkin Emmer, okay, and Waters. They are the renowned companies. I hope everybody has heard about them. And yes, they are working with this. Okay, so you can definitely go to their respective websites and you can just check that what exactly they are doing. Okay. So one more thing to add is the impact analysis of COVID-19. That is what should be the impact post pandemic or this post new normal that is the next normal how our next normal be looking like and specifically for the global mass spectrometry market so if you look at the healthcare sector it will see positive impact due to covid 19 definitely because a lot of thing has to be developed in, isn't it we have to be equipped with our medical system so for that it will have a good impact and a better and the best impact i would say that is 2020 to 24 and market impact, this market will have neutral impact due to the spread of COVID. So as you can see, market growth rate will accelerate at a CAGR of over 7%. So I hope everybody knows about CAGR. It's called as compound annual growth rate. Okay. The incremental growth will be USD 2.17. Growth for 2020 is 6.10. Okay. So definitely we can see a positive growth rate on a global aspect for mass spectrometric market and definitely as you can understand or you have understood that how important to do this technique as a course isn't it so yes jobs which are available for this field is you can work as an application specialist definitely you can work as a senior research scientist you can work as an analyst systems. You can work as a quality analyst, which is QA. You can work as a scientific manager. You can work as a scientist, definitely. And lastly, many more other applications and job profiles will be there. So, so many discipline you can play a role with doing one certification course. So you have to, while you're thinking, you have to give it a try, every one of you here. Isn't it? So, yes, you should be thinking right at this point, why I should be enrolling this course? Is it so? I'm pretty sure that you will be thinking about this. 
So I'll give your answer, don't worry. First, it will definitely help you to get a job. As I just now discussed about the job roles you might be getting after this or related to this particular field. Elaborate lessons, definitely. A lot of lessons we have, a lot of modules we have tried to do it in a very in-depth manner that will boost your skills. It will help you to learn more in a short period of time. There will be a time management also. So you will be learning the same thing in a very, very short period of time. You, you will be updated with the best and the latest knowledge. Okay. Definitely you can make your transition into a professional career very easily. And yes, it will help your CV stand out of the crowd and it's easy to get hired. So, and ultimately, what you're going to get at the end from us, this certificate of achievement, isn't it? And I'm pretty sure that everybody wants that. So why you're waiting, just go on and do it. It's high time now. Okay, so I'll, I'm giving you a clarion call to every one of you. So come and do enroll us. So yes, that is what. You have to join today and become a member. So do it as soon as possible. So thank you so much everyone. I hope you have benefited from this session. And definitely I want to end my session with this beautiful quote that Look back to learn, not to dwell. And look forward to achieve, not to fear. So that is the most important, no? We are right now standing in a new normal situation. But we have to move in or move forward to the next normal. And for that, we have to look forward to achieve something. But not with fear. Okay? So thank you so much, everyone. Stay well, stay safe. Good night. All right, looks like we have reached the end of our webinar. I hope you all liked it. Please let me know in the chat box. Did you like the webinar? Yes. Was it insightful? Of course. Yes. Great. OK, so now that we have arrived at the end of the webinar and before I sign off, I have a small story to tell all of you. I'm sure all of you know Thomas Alva Edison. All of you know him, of course. He is the inventor of the light bulb and so many other uh, you know, uh, inventions is credited, credited to Edison. Now, Thomas Edison, we say that he discovered how to make a light bulb. But before he reached that, he also learned thousand other ways of how to not make a light bulb. This is science, and that's how it works. I'm sure today's Nobel Prize winners, Emmanuel and Jennifer, also must have learned thousand ways of not, how to not edit a genome. The same way, today you learned mass spectrometry. You are going to be the future scientists of tomorrow. You have to learn this craft and understand that disappointment and failure is a part of every experiment. In fact, most of the experiments fail, but we target for that 1% which will actually succeed. But we have to go through the path of failure to reach there. So with those thoughts, I would like to conclude our webinar today. Now is the time for the surprise gifts, right? And of course, the ebook which I told you in the beginning, right? So the ebook which I told you, it's ready for download. So all you have to do is the link we are giving in the chat box right now, the feedback link. Fill it out, share your feedback, share your thoughts, because we, that will help us improve. And after that, you will be redirected to a link where you will get, get, get the surprise gift. And within 15 minutes to 30 minutes, I'm going to send you an email. Whoever fills the feedback form, only those people, you will be getting an email with the link to download this ebook which I have shown. And also, I'll be sharing the PowerPoints used in this webinar as a free gift tomorrow. Okay, it takes us 24 hours to collate everything. Okay, so see you soon in our next webinar, which is coming up very, very soon for all our Biotechnica and Rasainika fans. 
and don't forget to join that as well. Thank you so much. Have a productive day, a productive career, productive life. Thank you. Good night.